afternoon. Well, I just wanted to uh, talk about this structure a little bit. Um, I can't really see a practical purpose for it. Uh, I mean, the Sasquatch build them for, for many, many reasons. Um, usually it's not uh, built so that they can actually go inside of them or whatever. And as you can see, this one, well, I, I will walk around it. This one has no entrance anywhere for a person or a Sasquatch, really. Um, sometimes there's energy reasons behind them building them. Sometimes it, I think it's just imitation because they're doing them in campgrounds and they like to imitate and to fit in with the, with the kids and the high energy around the area kind of thing. But um, yeah, typical roof. Typical roof. But as I'm going around it, you'll see there is really no way that anybody could really fit in there. Um, so it doesn't look like, you know, if kid, kids are going to go to all this work to make something like this, you would think that they would want to use it for, a, you know, a fort or something, but there's a, there's no actually, there is actually no access anywhere here. Um, the other thing is, is I've seen very, very similar to this last year. And, uh, you know, Sasquatch do a, a number of different designs, you know, uh, TPs, lean twos, um, and just different kinds of things. But uh, I have seen this at least once before, this particular type. Yeah, look at all the work that's go, it's going into that roof. Um, wow. It's probably, I'm gonna say about 12 feet long. And, oh, I don't know, seven, eight feet wide. Yeah, as you can see, there's really no entrance to it at all. Uh, a little leaner here. Something I see a lot. Are they really going to stick up? Now what that means, uh, you know, when I see them leaning up against a tree and there's one or two and they're different sizes, to me that indicates uh, two individuals. And size is appropriate too. Um, you know, the longer one will be the, the adult or the bigger individual or bigger juvenile and then the, the shorter one. So it seems like in many cases they're size appropriate too. But yeah, as you can see, I've walked all around this. Uh, there really is no entrance way. So. You know, if, if a kid's going to go to all this work, you can be pretty well guaranteed that they're going to want to make a fort and they're going to be able to get in that. But, uh, you know, there's nobody going to be, be going inside of this. Yeah, that's, that's very, very cool. Uh, like I said, I've seen one other one like this. And uh, this one might even be a little more cool than the first one I seen a few years back. Or maybe it was last year. I guess it was last year. Anyway, uh, hopefully the weather will hold up. It's not supposed to be the greatest, but um, you know, last year when we had our camp out, when the Barb and Goldie group came up here at the same time, uh, the weather was actually crappy. And yet we had the most amazing encounters and experiences, very supernatural, very spiritual, very healing. I mean, the whole nine yards, it was, it was just a phenomenal time. And uh, you know, I'm hoping that the weather will be a little better than predicted and it's not actually going to be horrible, I don't think. But, um, yeah, it's going to be good. So anyway, yeah, this is extremely interesting. And like I said, uh, I don't know any, any kid who's going to build a fort or something like that that's not going to be able to leave an entranceway or, or access to it. So 
That fact alone is very interesting. Pretty amazing, pretty amazing. I mean, the thing is, is, uh, you know, um, the evidence of Sasquatch being around here is, is undeniable. Uh, R.E. was spotted walking around right in this area just last year during the camp out. There were like four or five other sightings. I had a couple myself, so. Um, you know, the evidence that they're here is overwhelming. That's not in question. Uh, but you know, when you see these structures, sometimes you have to consider that kids might have been involved or that they outright made them, but this does not appear to be the case here. There's no practical purpose for it. And uh, you know, if you look around, Sure, there's some wooden stuff lying around here, but not a whole lot. But this is a whole lot of stuff. And uh, quite often that, that's the case, and that's the puzzling part of it. I mean, if you're assuming it's people, because uh, where do they get all the stuff? Yeah, very, very cool. Very, very cool indeed. Can you hear that noise? That is cool. I think that's a raven, actually. Wow, that's a cool noise. It's like a... Well, I don't really know what it's like. <laughs> Love it. Wow. Jeez, imagine if I could hear properly. That would be pretty loud because I can hear it clearly. Really interesting sound. Really interesting sound. Ravens make a lot of strange, unusual noises and a wide variety of noises, so. I do believe that that is a raven. And I probably think that I probably heard something similar to that before, but uh, not too often. And that's a neat sound. Very neat sound. Ah. There's our raven. So maybe that's my answer. Maybe it was a raven. <laughs> I love ravens. I love, love ravens. Hey, here's something new to me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sticks leaned up against the tree. Is that the clan members represented there? Could be. Yeah, it's easier to uh, come and look around in here now because, uh, you know, the kids are back to school, which is good for everybody. And uh, so the campground is really, really thinned out so I can get in here and look around a little better. Uh, you know, because you've got to be considerate to the campers. You can't be walking right in behind their campsite and stuff. Uh, so easier to get around a look and uh, yeah it's uh, really really thinned out it's the best time of the year I think to be in here because um, it seems like the Sasquatch are always always really active at this time of year and uh, yeah I can feel their energy today which is a good sign and uh, it should be amazing next week when we're all camping here you know there's only gonna be maybe um, I don't know five six seven eight of us Maybe a few people stopping in uh, for a day or two of the week. But um, yeah, it's going to be epic, and I'm really looking forward to it. So I'll continue on, and uh, check out and see what else I can find. Hmm. I wonder if that was just snapped off like that. It certainly looks like it, doesn't it? You know, 
Sasquatch would definitely do those twists. I wouldn't, no, that's not a twist, but it looks like it was snapped off or twisted off at that point. And, uh, yeah, it takes, takes a little bit of strength to be able to do that. So I will continue on and see what the day has in store. This is extremely interesting. There's quite a bit here actually. Oh my God. First off, look down here. Oh, look at all the little acorns. I mean pine cones. Oh my God. Look at this. And then there's those rocks there. Oh my lord. Piece of bark just lying there. Check this out. Piece on the top. The little snap pieces. And they're actually little. Yeah, there's bark there. They're, they're actually little, little wise. Look at the bark just placed there. Oh my lord, that is, that, you know, I saw a really, really cool one last year that was kind of like, I don't know what it was, it was like a little altar or something, or some kind of shrine, or I'm not sure what it would be, but, um, uh, this is pretty cool, I mean, I love the sticks down there, I love the pine cones, the whole thing. Even just the little bark there, you know, was something that the Sasquatch do a lot of. Just lay bark there, and what the reason is, is I'm not really quite sure. But, uh, yeah, and look at all the bark placed up on there. Big stone there, big rock. Huh, very interesting. This is extremely interesting. I really, really love this. Wow. Really, really love that. Is that cool or what, guys? Oh my lord. Oh my lord. Very, very cool. Big stack of rocks. I can't figure out the reason for those. But they're interesting. And over here. Yeah, now once again. String on this one. Yeah, it's really hard to tell with this one. Um, I mean, the Sasquatch have answered me before that they do use string. And uh, I, I related that story one time. I was uh, looking at a structure. And I was with my friend uh, Randy Barnes. We're walking around. And there were all kinds of new structures and whatever that we were finding. And um, there was string tied to one of them. And you know, like when you see string, you automatically think people, but it's not necessarily the case because Sasquatch will utilize whatever they can. Um, but anyway, as soon as that thought came into my head and I was debating Sasquatch, man, Sasquatch, man, the string, blah, you know, hmm. As soon as that thought came into my head, right below our feet, Uh, Randy Barnes and my myself, right below our feet, we saw a tea glyph. You know, just as I was having that thought, uh, you know, like, I'm not going to say that the, the thought was thought placement, um, that I thought that. I think that was just me thinking and figuring stuff out. However, the answer came immediately, and it was, um, you know, a no-brainer. So... As I was having that thought, right at our feet, I saw a perfect tea glyph. 
which is a very common glyph for them. But the uh, the thing about it was is that the vertical piece and the horizontal piece were placed perfectly and centered perfectly. But the horizontal piece was a peeled stick, which is very, very common and is usually what they use with their glyphs. But the vertical piece that was placed directly in the center and touching the horizontal piece to form a perfect key glyph was the string that I was actually considering, the same string that I was considering uh, the possibility of what it was or who who put it there on, on the uh, the structure I was looking at. So they gave me an immediate answer and uh, you know that's how it works quite often and it's happened so many times with me that I don't doubt it. So that was their answer and they were saying yes we do use string. So I don't know. Quite often the string will be very very old as well. Uh, couple different types there. So I don't know. I just really don't know about this one. But worth noting. Definitely worth noting. Once again, something new, I haven't seen before. Pretty big logs on this, it's not a whole lot to it. I mean, the logs are big, but not one of their most complex uh, constructions, but uh, check this out. Just laid the, the moss on here. You know, that's a, a very, very good indicator of who made it <laughs> for me. Um, yeah. Careful backing up here. Yeah, the moss on top. Did give away. <laughs> time of year and they're they're active they're active cannot wait for next week a few more days and away we go new stuff new stuff this one is quite typical uh, where they put a roof on top of a hollowed out stump note once again there's the, the stick leaning up I like the stick leaning up. That uh, is a good indicator for me as to who made this. Yeah. Nice little thatched roof. Oh, here's another one over here. Check this out. Duck under here. one's not that new doesn't look like I'm not sure if I've seen it it's new to me but those ferns fern fawns don't look super super fresh I'm not sure how long they stay fresh for but then again they you know some they're a little brown they don't look super old but yeah, typical thatch roof ah Okay, this is something that I've seen a lot in other people's structures from across the, uh, the continent and stuff, and maybe even overseas. Um, 
where there's a little cut piece of wood or a log or a stump or something inside. And there we go, there it is. So, you know, you, you get to look for uh, commonalities all across North America and, and other places where the Sasquatch build these. And, uh, you know, you, you can see them. You can definitely see them. Look at all the ferns down there. There's a real big guy somewhere up there. I don't know if I'm going to climb that today. I think I'm going to drive through the other campground and see what I can find. Okay, another old thatched roof one. This one I have seen many times. Some of the uh, structures that were around here, two or three of them, there were some good ones. Uh, fallen down now or we're taken down or whatever um, now I found something interesting again another one of those rock rings check this out this is new this is new uh, you know I don't see any rocks around here <laughs> really Not really. See, that's one of the interesting things. I don't see, well, okay, there's a big, big one over there. There's, you know, there, there's the odd one. Um, but, yeah. Once again, they bring stuff in from who, who knows where. And that's quite interesting. That's, uh, you know, quite often I find the fire rings. Uh, and, so, and quite often they'll have like little snapped sticks all crisscrossed in it to simulate fire. This one doesn't have that, so I'm not sure what the purpose of this one is. But it is very cool. And like I said, I'm not sure where they got all those rocks from. But uh, there they are. Yeah, this place is just alive with discoveries. And actually, you know, I'm feeling some really, really good energy today. Uh, it's that time of year when they seem to be hanging around here more. And uh, they're probably excited about next week and the camp out, I would imagine. Um, they certainly came through in, in an unbelievable way last year. Uh, you know, as far as connecting with everybody that came. And uh, yeah, look at that ring. Pretty darn neat. Well, what do you know? Speak of the devil. I was just mentioning the rock rings and the fire pits, and uh, there, there it is. There's one right there, a new one for me. And as as you notice, all the little crisscross little pieces of twigs in there that simulate fire, in my opinion. Um, and the reason I say that is because uh, one of the places I used to camp out way, way, way back in the bush, um, I found a fire pit very much like this with the, uh, you know, the simulated fire, the little snap pieces, like I said, and the rock ring. And it was in direct, it was on the, just off the path, but it was in a direct line of sight with where... Sue and I always set up our camp and where we had our fire. And so, you know, to me, that, that's imitation. That's, uh, that's copying what we did, at least part of the reason. And, uh, you know, you, you look around and you see what they do and, and you, you find out uh, discoveries or whatever, and, and eventually you start putting the pieces together and... Uh, I very strongly feel that that is what they're doing here, you know, especially in light of what I found, uh, you know, at the place that I camped and they did it, uh, like I said, in direct line of sight where, where my fire would have been. Um, and, you know, um, there's a couple purposes for that as I see it. One is that, like I said, they were watching me and imitating what I was doing. 
But it was also there to show me that that's one of the reasons why they actually do it. So, now over here, not really that much, but there are a few interesting things. See all the rocks piled in there. Now this is actually interesting in a way too. Uh, they've got a few little pieces just put here and it, it really, really isn't much. But obviously placed there. But what I like, look at the little rock there. There's a little rock place there. I think that's kind of neat. Just little things that add up, you know, that you look for. Now, once again, I'm not saying that kids or people couldn't have done some of this. Obviously they could have. But, you know, you, can, you see a consistent pattern, um, you know, like the rock ring, like the design in the, of some of the structures and stuff like that. And, you know, a picture starts to, to formulate. So, yeah, keep your eyes open. But especially keep your heart open because that's what the Sasquatch actually want to connect with. There's another structure. I think I've seen this one last year. I'm pretty sure. Actually, I'm just about positive. But I just wanted to point out a few things. Once again, the moss placed on top and the bark see quite often placed in there. Yeah. Very cool. I'm in the adjacent campground now. Um, haven't looked around too extensively in it. I was just basically driving around. Yeah, I'm sure there's lots to be discovered in here, too. Well, I was just about to exit the campground and uh, found this little structure. Pretty typical one, but very, very neat. Lots of little sticks and stuff all in there. Watch my step. Like a little ass and over tea kettle. Yeah. Another very, very cool one. Well, loving it, loving it, loving it, loving it. I guess I'll start heading back. Yeah, I'll hop in old Eddie here. Good old Eddie. And uh, head on out. Kind of overcast today. Well, I mean, I think a lot of that's got to do with the smoke. And the fires down south, but uh, terrible situation. My 
thoughts and prayers go to all my friends down there and uh, I know there's been a lot of loss, a lot of tragedy. Hope you're all well, or as well as can be. But, um, yeah, very, very sad situation. Very sad situation. Second campground. What a neat little structure. Once again, serves no purpose other than whatever purpose they have it for. I mean, no human purpose. Same kind of construction. Same kind of roof. Okay, big piece in here. Yeah. This one is very, very cool. I like it. Check it out on this side. Really neat. Really, really neat. Just loving that. Yeah, let's walk over here. I've seen another little stump with a thatch roof on it. Yeah, literally signs of them everywhere around here. You just can't miss them. Oh, let's go over here. Yeah, something, something else. Another stump with some logs up against it. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, okay. It's Fairly small one, thought it went back deeper than that, but yeah. Same typical construction. This one's not thatched so much, but it's more or less just pieces of wood on top. Loving it. So, I think Eddie is calling me. I gotta go get a few supplies for camping next week. Yeah, favorite place in the world. This is the best place in the world for me. Well, Eddie, what do you think? Should we head on out? It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. So I thought I'd leave you with a few thoughts. Um, you know, when I was walking uh, out of the other campground, I saw a guy with uh, walking with his border collie. Oh, what great dogs they are. And, uh, you know, said, hi, how you doing? And um, I mentioned the Sasquatch to him because he seemed like a very open, good natured kind of guy and whatever and he was he didn't poo poo it or whatever but it seemed like it was a thought that had never even crossed his mind and the other thing he said was I've been in here all my life um, and he did seem to feel some energy I asked him if he felt the energy and I think I think that's very common when you're out in in the woods and in nature or whatever it, there's just a a connection that we feel on different levels, you know, like a really rudimentary level, somebody who doesn't even consider the spiritual aspect of the woods or of the Sasquatch or stuff like that, they still feel something. They may not be able to put their finger on it why. But uh, he felt he felt the, the beautiful benevolent energy of the place, but I could tell that he had never even considered the question of Sasquatch. And you know, and because of the fact that he had been in here, like he said, all his life, um, 
it just speaks to the fact that if Sasquatch have a connection with you, if you are connected to a Sasquatch clan or a teaching clan, it really is an honor and it's a privilege and it's, um, it's, it really is amazing. It's, it's a blessing, I guess I would say. And, um, You know, I, I personally come in here to connect with them and to look at the stuff they've made or whatever because it, it's it's interesting and you learn a lot of stuff from the stuff they've made and from watching and studying what they do and, you know, there is always that. But uh, the main reason I come in here is just to connect with them and the reason I share everything openly or whatever is because it is such a beautiful relationship and such a loving relationship that if I can open up anybody else's eyes and hearts to that and they can get a connection with Sasquatch or other spiritual teachers, um, then that's uh, the best thing that I can imagine that could happen to me is to open somebody else's eyes because uh, that's really what it's all about. And what they're all about is really to introduce us to our true nature, our universal self, uh, the, our connection to everything, connection to nature, connection to the all one. And so if I can open somebody's eyes and heart to that, that's where a, a, a huge transi transition in that person takes place. And they're changed, they're changed forever. Um, because once you've felt that, in my opinion, there really is no no going back, at least for me. Um, so that is what they are here to do at this time in these crucial, critical times in our human evolution and human history is, you know, is quite evident as to what's going on in the world today around us. But uh, they are here to reintroduce us to who we are because... Hey, and I see him flying by, Mr. Raven, friend. The guy was making the funny noises earlier. Like I said, that's what they're here to do, to introduce us to our true nation, to our sauce, because, like I said, once you've felt that heart connection and you've connected to a teaching clan, you are changed and you can't go back. And it's a, a better way to live, a better way to... To interact with everything because you feel the connection to everything. You have that respect. You have that knowing, and it's uh, it's really, really is a beautiful thing. So that really is my purpose: is to hopefully introduce somebody else to the experiences that I've experienced, and that to me is the ultimate blessing. So, thanks for listening and, and joining me in my little walk in the woods. Found lots of neat stuff. Felt their beautiful energy. Like I said, I'm looking forward to next week and spending a whole week in here. So, thanks again and uh, blessings to every one of you. Yeah.